Hey everybody! Now I'm here today with Pat Yonker. Hey Pat! Now Pat has ridden in the Tour de France and he has won the Tour Down Under back in 2004. So who best to talk to and give tips on descending because descending is really scary for beginners, for people like me. We come down really fast and you're like, I don't know, I don't want to, I don't want to fall off. I don't know how to go around the corners and stuff. So Pat's going to give us some tips. Yay! Hi Serafina. Hi. Hi, thanks for having me today. Um, yeah, I used to uh, ride this bike, not this particular bike, uh, for a living and I learned a lot in my days at the Tour de France. I think one of the biggest challenges of the Tour de France is not just uh, going up the climbs, it was going down the descent safely. And really today, Serafina, I really want to point, you know, give a few tips what I learned through the years um, to make descending a, a little bit safer. Um, I'll definitely be in the drops, okay? I'll be in the drops and my fingers will be on the brakes and um, would be what they call feathering. So we'd be always feathering the brakes. Uh, on the straights would favor the, the front brake a little bit more than the back. And I guess one of the rules is um, we would never really um, uh, brake when you're really going through the apex of the corner. Obviously, here we are at Norton Summit, and, um, which is a favorite of mine and many others. Um, when we're going for a right-hander, I think it's very important. If we're going for a right-hander, Obviously, you've got the right leg up, uh, left leg down. I think uh, what's also important is, is that you've got to see the pedals as being pressure plates. So when we're going, say, to a right hand, then I'll be pushing down on my left, my left leg. So try and get your mind around that the pedals are actually pressure plates. You're going right, you're really pushing down with your left leg as you go right. And then when you go into a left-hander, Obviously, it's the opposite. I'm really pushing down uh, on my right pedal as I'm going in, leaning into a left corner. We, we lean, we try and lean into the corners, okay? And um, so, so you're putting weight, so when you're going around the corner, because this is what I've just learned from when you're saying this um, just recently, is I'd, I'd just like lean, but I wouldn't do anything with this leg. So you're actually pushing down yeah, on that leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. literally putting you're some like pressure. Putting weight. Yeah, so I've started trying to do that. And I think it gives me a little bit more confidence when I'm going around because I don't feel so, wow, I'm going to fall over. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah well, of course, what's, what's really important is tire choice. Um, I definitely prefer 25 mil tires. Um, if you have enough room in the frame, and you could fit 28 mil tires, then go for 28 mil tires. On my other bike, I have 28. I love 28 mil tires. Good quality tires. I got Vittoria Corsa graphene tires here. Excellent tire. Low, low pressure. I see too many people still pumping up the tires over 110, 20 psi. It's not necessary. Um, if you weigh 80, 70 kilograms, 90 kilograms, um, preferably 90 psi in the back. Uh, in the front, so 85-90 psi in the front, and um, 90-95 in, in the rear. So don't overinflate your tires. Really, that's something over the last 15 years that's changed, in particular since my day racing, where the mechanics would pump 140 psi, and that was just just amazing how we could actually descend in the Tour de France and such high um, pressures and such a narrow tire. So a good quality tire, 25 mil, 28 mil if you've got enough room. Now, have a good bike fit. I see a lot of people um, unbalanced on the bike. You need to be balanced. So go uh, to your local um, bike shop or bike fitter and get a good bike fit because obviously you want to be really nicely balanced on the bike. You want to have um, elbows want to be um, not locked, but you want to have be flexible. Your shoulders got to be relaxed. So uh, you really don't want to be too stressed. I see too many people with locked out elbows, uh, you know, their, their jaws clenched and they're really kind of, um, you know, really all tensed up. So you've got to be, got to be kind of relaxed. So I think that's important. A good bike fit, good tires, and um, obviously make sure you, your brake pads are all in perfect condition. I think what's also important is um, you don't need to ride the whole descent in the saddle. With your bum in the saddle, I don't know how some people do it. You'll notice some of the better descenders, they kind of hover a little bit about above the saddle. So um, in particular on the, on the straights, um, I prefer to put my weight to the back a little bit more. And, um, but you see some of the pro riders, they're hunched 
forward and they're really aerodynamic. I'm not really in favor of that. That might be faster, but definitely not safer. Yeah. And what we're talking about today and what you mentioned is all about safety. Yeah. So all that crazy sitting on a top tube like Chris Froome did and what the UCI recently uh, and banned, they banned that now. You're not allowed yeah. to sit on a top tube descending. Um, I prefer my weight is a little bit on the rear of the tire. My elbows, I'm in the drops. I've got my fingers feathering the brakes. So we're always feathering the brakes, adjusting speed. And um, to be really honest, the best tip is just to um, ride within your ability. And as you ride more, uh, Serafina, as you get more comfortable with the descents around Adelaide, you'll find yourself, you can slightly increase the speed. But the biggest tip really is, is ride within your ability. Yeah. And um, it's no, no problem to go slow, unless you get paid a lot of money to ride a bicycle fast down a hill. I don't really understand why yeah. uh, all these people bomb down the hills and descents around Adelaide, yeah. and then they, um, you know, they end up in hospital. Yeah, it's, it's scary actually. I find it really scary. I've always got my hands on the brakes. So I'm still learning to go down on the, the drop bars because you feel more vulnerable down here, being lower, and I suppose it's just practicing that, isn't it? Coming down oh. and just, yeah. Um. Um, the, most people tell you to be in your drops, um, and that's something you might have to get used to. Um, I, you know, I sometimes uh, descend uh, on my hoods, and uh, but you know, it's something whatever comes naturally to you, and that you have uh, a good, um, you know, uh, feeling of the bike, and you're in control of the bicycle. Yeah. So. And, and I'm finding like with the Fuji that now I'm more connected to my bike, and so when I'm going around the corners, I'm like I'm a part, you know, I'm going with my bike. So that's a different style of riding than riding on a flat bar where you're sort of staring around a corner. It's very different, so it's like you're driving like this, whereas when on the Fuji, I'm like, me and the bike could go around the corner together. So yeah, it's a really different feeling. So I think, yeah, and it's more faster. Um, yeah, it's, uh, and the other thing that you talked about as well was, and I only just started doing this since you mentioned it, was braking with the front. I've always braked on both, because I thought if I braked on the front, the back wheel's gonna come up and go over. <laughs> feather, and, feather the front. Yeah, yes. so feathering on the front. So what is what is that? Because I think I've talked to other people, and other people do the same as me. Yeah. Like they'll brake on the back and the front together coming down, so. Um, I mean, to be, to be really honest, it's what you're comfortable with. Um, um, when going at a high speed, you'll use both. And if you're going a little bit slower, then on the straights, you can feather the front brake. And then obviously when you're going into the corners, you don't want to be braking at all. So, and obviously with disc brakes as well, because we've got to talk about disc brakes. This is a rim, a rim brake, but if you know a lot of people have disc brakes, uh, the difference would be is you shouldn't be hanging on the, on the brakes for too long. You know, a lot of people are riding the brakes for too long when they should be pumping. I think with disc brakes or um, uh, rim brake, you really should be pumping action, and okay. uh, in particular, adjusting the speed before you get to the corner. So you really want to uh, wipe off the speed before you hit the corners so you can very comfortably um, take um, you know, the apex of the corner, the smoothest, safest line. And so you said you don't break when you're going around the corner? So Not in the corner. In, in the corner you don't break? If you can't, if you, unless it's absolutely necessarily, but really your speed should be adjusted beforehand. Um, but you can, you can make a slight adjustment in it if you believe you're going a little bit too quick. Um, but um, we will actually um, wipe most of the speed before we enter the switchback. And, yeah. why, and why is that? Um, because actually when you watch the pros race, as we hit the apex of the corner, we're already starting to accelerate out. So, so we're almost, uh, it's, it's uh, kind of physical uh, descending at the highest level. I always found at the Tour de France, it was really tough and you were really tired and your arms and hands were sore at the highest level when you're competing against the guys that are excellent descenders. But for us weekend riders now, uh, really it's, it's um, all about safety. So yeah, wipe as much speed before uh, the switchback and um, then we accelerate out, out as we exit the, the switchback. So wipe as much wipe as much speed before the switchback. So by feathering and then like pumping it, come yeah, in, and then yeah. come into it, not breaking, leaning, put, yeah. putting the weight in the yeah. other leg, and then as you're coming out of it, start accelerating out of it, and yeah. then that's the and ride at your own comfortable pace, I suppose, where you're feeling safe, and ride down on the drops. Yeah. Um, yeah okay. And, and yeah. also I keep the legs spinning, even if you're on a long stray. I see people not moving the legs. It's good to keep the legs moving and yeah. keep the legs spinning. Yeah. And you know, if you really um, want to improve your descending, uh, something quirky what the Euro pros um, used to do and, and maybe uh, they still do today is, um, um, you know, if you find a really long descent, uh, what they do is they take the chain off. So you take your chain off 
and um, that's how you learn how to descend as well because obviously no train you can't accelerate and you actually learn about um, taking proper lines, braking and not braking too much and uh, how to really learn how to descend uh, you might well just uh, do that with no train but around Adelaide there's not that many opportunities but maybe you're lucky enough to live in Europe somewhere and uh, that's how we teach the youngsters uh, how to um, really handle the bikes and uh, by taking the train off so that's something uh, yeah, I'm not going to be doing that no, anytime not today. soon. <laughs> not today. <laughs> and you were saying that Norton Summit, which is where we are here in Adelaide, is the most uh, recorded Strava segment, one of the most recorded Strava downhill segments in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think for a few of the Strava enthusiasts who like to record the rides here behind us here in Norton Summit, um, that is one of the most recorded Strava sectors on the planet. I'm not sure if it is the, um, maybe around Tour Down Under time when 10,000 people ride it each day, potentially. Um, but yeah, obviously um, with so many people going up, there are thousands of people uh, coming down Norton yeah. Summit. And unfortunately, uh, um, a few of them end up in hospital. And that's <laughs> what today's YouTube video is about, is about safety. <laughs> yeah. And another fun fact, the Patrick Yonker Valleyway is named after Pat. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you're riding the Valleyway going, who's this guy? This is the guy. Yay! Awesome. Thank you, Pat. This has been really cool. Um, I hope this helps you because I know it's helping me heaps, especially descending. It's really scary. So get on it. Remember to subscribe. Follow me on social. See you on the road. See you on the climbs. See you on the descent. And we'll do a video on the Valleyway with Pat sometime in the future as well. So keep following along. See you. Bye. Hey. Oh,